Hi YouTubers, my name is Kevin and you're watching The Royal We. This message is going to be about toxic projection. Now how many of you have dealt with toxic negative projection from your family, your friends, your coworkers, your lovers, your boyfriends, your girlfriends, your spouse? And how many of you know the damaging effects it can have on your life as you stand there believing that everybody is looking at you now in this horrible way? And it's made up of complete lies negative, horrible things, some of the stuff you have no idea where it even comes from, right? It's toxic projection. And so that's why in this message, we're going to talk about three very important things to understand. The first is what projection actually is and why narcissistically abusive people use projection against you. And then the second thing we're going to talk about is what are the requirements in order for toxic projection to even work? Because toxic projection, you'll discover, only works within a confined space. We'll talk about that. The third thing we're going to talk about is how to remove yourself from a toxic projection situation so that it does not have a negative impact on your life. So to begin with, let's talk about what toxic projection is. Now, a lot of YouTubers and and people who teach on the subject of narcissistic abuse will talk about projection as being something that a narcissist feels about themselves but projects onto you. So for example, if a toxic narcissist believes that they're stupid, they're going to call you stupid. If they believe they're ugly, they'll call you ugly. If they believe they're selfish, they'll call you selfish. If they believe they're judgmental, they will call you judgmental. These are real things you've probably heard during projection, right? But how many of you realize that it's actually deeper than that? There's more depth to it. And so we're going to talk about it and uncover some of this, this depth. The reality is, is that toxic, narcissistically abusive people, they hate their lives. They absolutely hate their lives and they're filled with resentment and this stems back from their childhood. They resented the children who had good relationships with their parents because they couldn't. And then in school, they resented the kids who got good grades because they couldn't. And then later on, they resented the kids who were good good looking and and athletic because they weren't. And then even later, they resented those who were popular, who were funny, who were charming because they're not. And the most important thing, the one that really irritates toxic, narcissistically abusive people are people who are genuinely filled with joy and happiness and love and empathy. They hate this and they resent it because they don't have these things, right? Now, instead of a toxic narcissist working to find out in their lives what they need to do to find their own genuine joy, how to get past their resentments, how to find the, how to do that work in their life, right? The the typical work that a lot of us have to go through. Narcissists, instead of doing that, they've decided that it's much easier for them to just flip the script of the entire reality of the world. They rewrite the narrative. So now what's wrong has become right. What's right is now wrong. So them being upset and moody and angry and wanting to yell and scream and and cuss and shout and fight. That's right. What's wrong are the people who are filled with joy who are telling them to stop. That's wrong. They flip the narrative because it's easier for them to flip the narrative. They've written their own script. They're the director now of their own movie. And in their movie, in their narrative, there's good guys and bad guys. There are heroes and there are villains. And they are the hero and you are are now the villain. Now, in order for narcissists and toxic individuals to get their movie displayed, they need to become what's called a projector. And so, that's what they do. They become a projector and they fire it up. Now, number two, let's talk about the requirements that need to be met in order for toxic projection to work against you. So obviously you need to have the projector. In this case, it's the narcissist. This classic vintage projector right here is called the narcissist. And now not only is the narcissist needed in the situation, but also a screen, a surface in which the toxic projection can be projected onto. And now this is where you come into play. So there's two requirements so far. 
the projection, the projector, and the screen, you, right? Now there's a third thing that's typically needed. It needs to be a dark space around you, right? So you have to be in a stable place right in front of the projector. So the narcissist needs to get you to a point where you are locked in to a relationship with the narcissist, with the toxic projector. And then they need to isolate you and get you away from all the light that typically surrounds you. Your friends and people who love you and say good things about you, they need to get all of that away. Why? Because it makes it harder for their projection to shine on you with all that other light surrounding you. So this is where we get into narcissists isolating you in order for their projection to work. So those are the requirements. Again, what's required? A projector, a screen or a surface, and also a darker place, meaning isolation, all right? Now the third thing, let's talk about how to get out of the situation so it doesn't affect you. Now, based on what we've learned so far, some of it should sound obvious. The first thing, don't be a screen that stands in place. This is what makes uh, going no contact so important. Because an, a projector is not going to chase around a moving screen. It's going gonna, it's gonna to wear out. It's going to stop eventually. If your screen keeps backing up and backing up, the, the projection is harder to see. So the goal is to detach completely so that you are not within a projecting range at all. If there's nothing to project on, then the projection doesn't work. Again, projection has the requirement of a confined space in which the projector and a screen exist together in line, in, in, in alignment with each other. All right? Now then, some of you are saying, Kevin, what if you cannot get out of the situation? Okay, well, there's another way that the projection can be stopped. And that is for you to shine a light from within yourself so brightly that it outshines the projection. You see, the projection also requires a certain amount of darkness so that its lies and its narrative can be projected onto you. But have you ever watched a movie projected onto a screen that's already lit? It doesn't work. You can't see it. The same is true as if your light is shining. So if you can find a way to make your light just glow, your goodness and your joy to be so constant and so heavy that their projection doesn't even show up on you, then everybody around you is going to see what? They're going to see your glowing shine and they're not going to see what the projector is trying to put on the screen onto you. All right? Listen, I want to be a part of your healing journey. Visit www.jointheroyalwe.com where you can schedule one-on-one -on -one time with me. We can FaceTime. We can work over the phone or even over email at www.jointheroyalwe.com. Also, join me every Monday night at 9 o'clock p.m. Central Time for Royal We Live Chat. It's an opportunity for you to meet people in the Royal We community. You can call in and ask your questions. You can ask your questions in the chat room and it's free. Also, join me every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. for Royal We Fellowship. This is an in-depth Bible teaching that's based on understanding a narcissistic world. It's unlike any Bible teaching that you have been a part of. I promise you that. And I'll be back with more videos right here on the Royal We. All the links are down in the description box. We'll see you next time.